Okay. So it seems like these management systems are really taking the headache out of uh, prior authorizations and things like that. They could if if we move to a more aggressive approach. And um, if I may, I want to talk a little about the future of the revenue cycle because there is some potential that it will dramatically change using uh, some new standards that are being developed by health level seven. So if you think about uh, what we use every day in our lives, we use our smartphones and our tablets and we use apps and the um, standard behind those apps is known as API, a Application Programming Interface Standards. That allows data to move very quickly from place to place. So Health Level 7 under um, uh, an organization called the Da Vinci Project is developing a set of use cases around this API technology which literally should allow, uh, should allow practice to use their EHR much like a smartphone and use apps to move data back and forth between the practice and the health plan to achieve some of these administrative tasks. And for example, prior authorization. Um, prior authorization is one of the da Vinci use cases. And already we are seeing some vendors offer a variation of this. Um, and it's a mixture of the clinical side of the practice and the administrative side of the practice. And I'll, I'll, man I'll mention it briefly. There are three vendors that now offer the ability for the physician at the time of the patient encounter. So when they're talking to the patient in their office and they say, um, I think, uh, you need to go on this particular drug, and I'll just pick um, a, a blood thinner. So they want to uh, put them on. Um, they want to put them on a blood thinner. They, um, using their EHR, can ping the health plan to find out a if a prior authorization is necessary. Yes or no? Um, is drug in the patient's formulary? Um, is uh, what is the patient out-of-pocket expense going to be? And most importantly, it'll offer some therapeutic alternatives. Um, so for example, if the um, physician types in drug A and it comes back that it requires a prior auth, it's not in the formulary, it's a $250 out-of-pocket expense for the patient, but Xeralto, you know, drug B, um, is in the formulary, a $10 copay, and no prior auth is, is, is required. It allows uh, the physician to have that conversation with the patient and potentially change their um, prescription to meet what's best for the patient. Before that, that was done downstream at the pharmacy, um, and it meant calls back and forth with the practice, costing money for both sides. Perhaps the patient says, I can't afford the out-of-pocket and never gets the drug. So that's one example of what I call the merger of clinical and administrative processes. And I think that's going to be the future of healthcare. So for example, right now, the revenue cycle team is the one primarily who conducts the prior authorizations. So if, if the, um, the patient um, needs an MRI, um, it might take days or even weeks to, to submit that prior authorization, submit the supporting documentation, why the physician thinks they need that test, and then to get an answer back from the health plan. But if you could automate that, so while the patient was sitting with the physician and they could, using their EHR, go back and forth with the health plan, that would speed things up tremendously. And one interesting new uh, project that is underway currently is actually coming from CMS, and it's called the Document Requirement Lookup Service, the DRLS. And what that is, is specific to Medicare, um, and they're looking at CPAP and Oxygen, two DME products that require prior authorization under Medicare. And what this project does is it's a back and forth communication using 
this Da Vinci approach called FHIRE, F-H-I-R, Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources. That's the new standard. Using this new standard, it's a quick conversation between Medicare and the provider's EHR. So when they say, I want to um, prescribe oxygen for my patient, it immediately tells the provider whether or not a prior authorization is required. But most importantly, it provides what's called um, the clinical template directly to the provider. So here's what information you'll need to fill out in order to ask for a prior auth, or if a prior auth is not required, here is the template that you'll need to fill out to make sure that if there's a post uh, payment audit, you'll have the right information to support um, um, that claim. So I think it's the beginning of a new era in revenue cycle management. And I think the promise there is tremendous. Of course, there are still challenges. We would still need to have the government uh, support the standards. Uh, generally speaking, the vendors will not move to an untested standard that is not mandated by the government because they're always concerned that they won't get support from the health plans. So if that is anointed by the government, I think we could see um, really a revolution in revenue cycle management. Um, it won't be tomorrow, but it's something to watch for in the future.